dear dharma friends greetings from dharamshala it is a bit strange for me to uh, talk with you without seeing each other the modern technology have given so much so many facilities to uh, humanity to communicate with each other from long distances without meeting each other i think it is a good thing we should appreciate your your heart members have uh, asked me to give a teaching for your center on the topic of uh, guru devotion and i was a little uh, hesitant in the beginning to accept this request because of many limitations on my side you might be aware that i am not a good teacher first of all although i receive quite a lot of teaching from my great gurus but i was uh, not able to uh, practice them in my life because of the entire my life had been uh, engaged into a no religious uh, kind of thing social uh, politics education so on and so forth without practice to teach to other is something undesirable this is my first limitation and the second limitation is uh, the language barrier i never learned the english language although i have uh, many opportunity in the beginning of uh, my taking refuge in india but i never availed <laughs> intentionally i did not avail these opportunities and i rather resist to run to learn any other language so therefore i am not able to uh, express myself fully in english language shortage of vocabulary and uh, also uh, um my pronunciation is uh, very bad so you may not, you may not able to uh, comprehend what i am talking about so you have to be listen very carefully if you are face to face you could ask to uh, repeat or to clarify so communicating this kind of uh, online you can never ask me to uh, repeat or to uh, clarify what i am talking about due to these limitations i was not very uh, willing to uh, accept to uh, accept your request to talk about uh, guru devotion as a, a part of your regular dharma teaching in your heart center but finally i accepted because uh, you all have asked me quite sincerely and apart from that uh, 
my late friend, Gilek Rinpoche, who have been a lifelong close friend right from the Jipo Monastery and then in the SL life as well. So he was so kind to me. And I was told that he had instructed that I should also invited to teach your center. So this is uh, a, some kind of emotionally uh, important for me to fulfill his wishes. So therefore, I venturing to talk something in few sessions for your regular program of the center's religious activity. And one thing I must uh, clarify in the very beginning, since I'm not a, a regular Dharma teacher, so to speak, nor I can spend any time with you, neither we are able to uh, meet with each other frequently. And uh, at this moment, I have no knowledge about uh, your situation, your liking, disliking, and stage of your learning. So therefore, my uh, talk will uh, suit to uh, your requirement or it's something quite different that is doubtful. So therefore, you may not consider it as a Dharma teaching. You can just consider it uh, as a, an academic talk. To have a relationship as a guru and a disciple through giving and taking teaching of Dharma, then uh, the relationship become a very secret. And from both sides, to maintain that relationship intact is uh, not so easy. So therefore, just like I uh, talk in uh, academic classes. So I share some of my knowledge or some of information which I acquired from my gurus or from the treatises. I share it with you. So you may not have a teacher-taught relationship or guru disabled relationship. On the country, just as a Dharma friend, who is sharing the uh, dharmic information. So that I would like to uh, make clear at the very beginning. Now coming to the uh, subject, you might uh, aware that uh, the Guru devotion is uh, the most important part of the gadget path to enlightenment. Yes, I'm, I must tell you in the beginning that when the shortage of vocabulary, I have to use many Tibetan words for my own sake and many Sanskrit words so, which may not be uh, understandable to you, but uh, you need not uh, care it. It is only for my own usage. So, to keep my thought intact, I have to use occasionally uh, some 
non english words tibetan words or sanskrit words uh, you may not uh, take note of it i will try to uh, translate it whatever words i find in english language there are many lumbering literature have been translated the tungapas great gejo path navin chimo was translated into english many years ago and now it is available so i try to find or take some words from that translation and uh, at the same time i may use my own words for the convenience of myself and perhaps it may also convenient to you what i am talking about what why why i talking about this translation you may read them after listening to uh, my talk or before listening to my talk so you will uh, refresh or reconfirm what we have discussed uh in this uh, in this section so now there are different way of using the different words such as uh, teacher and student the lauren test lauren translations are used mostly teacher and student then relying upon teacher like this kind of expression so when we may use this term all we may use i'm i would prefer to use the word guru it is uh, known to all instead of teacher and i may use the uh, word disciple instead of student these two words are more convenient to my thought and uh, having said that now we will uh, begin to uh, enter into the um basic discussion how to rely a disciple on the guru shinyan tembetsu so this can also be uh, said that uh, guru devotion this is also good word and this subject we will uh, discuss in five chapters or in five points for the convenience of uh, understanding it fully and also to memorize it in a in a one of uh, um structure sequence and structure so that easy to uh, practice easy to uh, practice or easy to uh, think about and to study and to learn so these uh, five uh, point or five chapters are as follows the first is uh, um to define the characteristics or the definition defining the characteristics of the guru to whom the disciple have to depend upon rely upon or have the devotion unless uh, a person is uh, qualified 
to become as a teacher, as a guru, to have uh, disciples for uh, path of dharma. So there are certain basic requisite qualifications to become guru that need to be defined in the first chapter. Because any disciple who wish to uh, rely on any guru before having guru-disciple relationship, the disciple should uh, examine the guru whether he possesses the required qualifications to become as a guru. And the person does not have those qualifications, then it is better not to uh, establish a guru disciple relationship. With that person, you may discuss matters of spirituality or dharma, but not as a one's own guru, not receiving teaching, but just uh, sharing information as I am doing just now. Then the second chapter or second point is uh, the uh, defining the characteristic of the uh, disciple by whom a guru devotion or relying on guru the disciple has, should also have a certain requisite qualifications. If uh, someone is not uh, possessing those qualifications, first he or she must try to uh, develop those qualities, those requirements in one's own mind and thereafter go to the master, go to the guru. The guru might be uh, qualified, but the disciple doesn't have uh, the required qualification of as it becoming a disciple, then the relationship may not be uh, appropriate or well established. So both of them should have uh, requisite qualifications. The two chapters in the beginning, the qualifications of a guru, the qualifications of a disciple, this will be discussed in accordance with the uh, treatises, scripture. And then third chapter is uh, to recognize the benefits of uh, relying on guru by the disciple. What are the uh, advantages? What are the benefits? What are the gain if you rely on a qualified guru? Then you are journeying in the spiritual path will be a definitive and will progress according to one's own capacity and wish. Then the fourth is what are the Faults, what are the uh, uh, disadvantages if you do not have a guru devotion? So this also needs to be uh, considered. And the fifth is uh, how to uh, cultivate the guru devotion or how to uh, rely upon the guru by the disciple. 
in which way, what are the methods, and what, what are the um, uh, way to have a complete devotion to one's own guru. And uh, these five chapters will uh, comprehensively give you the knowledge how to uh, cultivate, how to uh, uh, practice the Guru devotion in a right manner. So now we'll uh, first discuss about the uh, required qualifications of uh, a Guru. In a different uh, Buddhist sutras and tantras, different qualifications have been prescribed. Particularly in the tantrayan, different tantra, according to its own tradition, different kind of qualifications have been prescribed. So we need not go into those. And uh, in the Paramitayan also, the Mayan Guru and the, uh, the Sharavakyan Guru, these qualifications are also little different. So here, what we are discussing is uh, a guru who teaches the uh, path of Mahayan leading to Buddhahood. For that, a guru must have uh, 10 basic uh, qualities or basic uh, uh, qualification to become a Paramitayan Mayan Guru to lead uh, disciples on the path. This is a uh, sum up or it is uh, uh, clarified in a sequence by the Ayamatri Nath whose uh, treatise uh, the Shastra Sutra Alankar. <clears throat> Maitrinath has written five different treatises and among them the largest is uh, Sutra Alankar. In the Sutra Alankar he uh, described ten different qualifications for a Mahayan path guru. And uh, I, may, uh, I may recite the word Shinye Tulva Shiva Nir Shiva Yundan Lava Tsunje Mungicho Tini Rab Tola Make Den Tsivedani Chua Panatens. This is Tibetan word translated from its original Sanskrit. So the first is uh, Dhulva, and the second is Shiva, and the third is the Nivar Shiva. These three first qualifications is uh, as a result of uh, practicing the Buddha's uh, basic teaching of uh, um, threefold education, lapasum, um, uh, 
three British standing. Some other translators used to this. Three British, uh, three uh, precious standing of mind. So that is uh, the shield, the samadhi, and the pragya. Shield means moral, moral codes or ethics. The uh, samadhi is uh, concentrative, meditative concentration or one-pointedness of mind. And then uh, from that analytical mind, <coughs> the concentrative and the analytical mind quality, that's samadhi. And then the th third is uh, awakening of wisdom. Wisdom, the uh, perception of the truth. And uh, these three is the basic uh, uh, precious training of the Buddha's teaching. So the first is uh, displayed. <coughs> the person who qualified for a guru must be disciplined mind. How the mind, how the person can be disciplined, that is uh, through the practice of uh, uh, various uh, ordinations such as uh, such as um, bhikkhu, bhikkhuni, or bodhisattva wo, or tantra wo. with this uh, kind of words, there are so many things which need to be uh, followed, preserved, and through which the moral conduct is uh, completely in order and ethically very sound. And by that way, the person become very humble, very disciplined. Nothing goes beyond the uh, limitations of the vows. And thereby, the person is uh, very um, humble and uh, very disciplined. So that is the first qualification. The uh, uh, arrogance or uh, a kind of uh, kind of uh, unpeaceful mindset or a mindset which goes uh, beyond the uh, boundaries of uh, moral and ethic codes are being completely um, completely controlled and therefore the person is uh, uh, person is uh, very much trained or disciplined. That's the first qualification. The second qualification is Srin, uh, Shiva. This is a result of uh, concentrative mind, meditative concentration or one-pointedness, which is also maybe translated as peaceful mind. The scattering of thought is being eliminated and the mind can concentrate on one point for any period of time and by which the body is also capable to uh, undertake any kind of uh, uh, work. And uh, the analytical mind can analyze things without any scattering the mind or the sinking of mind. So this is uh, 
the second qualification. It is the result of the uh, practice of samadhi. Then the third is uh, Nyar Shiva, that is, uh, um, that is uh, thoroughly peacefied mind. Thoroughly peacefied mind means that a mind peacefied by uh, samadhi may not have uh, that kind of stability. The pacified mind, by the perception of the truth, by the seeing the reality, the awakening of wisdom, that makes uh, the person's mind completely, thoroughly pacified. And there's no chance of uh, arising unpeaceful things at any time. So these are the three first qualities. Then the fourth is uh, better quality than the disciple, Yunden Lava. The Yunden can be uh, translated as quality, or in this context, it may also translate it uh, as knowledge. <clears throat> to become a guru, the person must possess quality of mind or the knowledge or the wisdom much superior than, much better than the disciple. If the knowledge and quality of mind is equal to the uh, disciple, then the guru may not be able to lead the disciple in uh, further development, in the higher stage. So therefore, the fourth is uh, superior quality or superior knowledge. And uh, the fifth is uh, Sunche. That means very hard working. And uh, in uh, other translations, they translated it as uh, being energetic. Being energetic implies here as a quality of guru is uh, very hard working and energetic in teaching to one's disciples. As long as it is required, as much as is required, the guru must be able to teach, explain, train the disciples. And uh, it should not be a lazy or it should not be a postponing the things, so energetic and hardworking, tirelessly able to teach as long as it is required. So this is the, uh, the fifth. The sixth is uh, Lungi Chuba. Lungi Chuba means uh, thorough knowledge of uh, scripture. Scriptural knowledge is uh, very thorough. That means not only the principles of Dharma, the knowledge of principles of Dharma is uh, enough. The reference in the sutras and in the shastras, any principle which are under constitution, the guru must be able to uh, find the reference in Buddha's own words, in which sutra, in which tantra, 
Buddha have said this principle or this point. So therefore, the scriptural knowledge must be sufficient, must be enriched. Then the seventh is uh, having the knowledge of reality. Here, the knowledge of reality means the, uh, uh, the ultimate truth, the Paramat Satya, the voidness of uh, self existence, and uh, the principle of interdependent arising through which the uh, relative things can be exist and but in the absolute everything is in shuni in emptiness so this knowledge is the uh, dini rabtoba this knowledge is necessary for a guru then the eighth is uh, skillful teaching, explanation, skillful in uh, interpreting the treatises or whatever the subject which need to be taught to the uh, disciple. The teacher must have a very skillful way of uh, explaining to narrate the things in a very uh, eloquently so that any level of uh, disciple could be able to uh, comprehend and understand what the Guru is uh, teaching. So this is uh, um, skillful in a, in a explanation or skillful in a narrating or explaining anything in many ways, in a different ways. So that is uh, the eighth uh, qualification. Then ninth is uh, very important. That is Tsivedani means uh, having loving concern, a depth loving concern for the disciple, loving kindness, taking care of all the requirements, not only the uh, teaching of Dharma, but also physical well-being, mental well-being, or worldly affairs, everything of the disciple is being uh, taken care of. So a very intimate relationship with uh, loving kindness, emotionally a kind of uh, uh, closeness that is uh, necessary for a good teacher, good guru. Then the tenth is uh, Chua Pamba. This uh, many um, English translation use this uh, abandoning dispiritedness, working very hard, teaching the things uh, with great effort, but the disciple are not able to uh, 
comprehend or understand and have to repeat again and over again and which may irritate the teacher. And in such situation, a teacher must be a no irritable, trialessness, having no uh, attitude of uh, dispirited feeling, so able to uh, cope with, uh, with any uh, dull and uh, unintelligent disciple may also be helped with appropriate methods and ways. So this uh, um, this uh, ten qualifications are for become a good guru. And in any way, to become a guru, some extent, at least 50% of these qualities, and particularly the first three, and then the loving kindness, the ninth, these four are more important, so which must be possessed by a teacher. And if someone has uh, fully or partially these uh, qualities, then that person may be considered as, as a good guru good teacher and with whom any disciple can establish a guru shishya guru disciple relationship willingly and which may able to grow into the right way so this is the first point the characteristic of the Guru, in a nutshell, in accordance with the Maitrinath's uh, uh, Sutra Alankar. So you may read them in uh, Sutra Alankar, his commentaries, or Lavrin treatises. You will understand it better if you read them extensively. So now the second chapter is uh, to discuss about the uh, or to define the, about the uh, um, about the uh, characteristic or qualifications of uh, a disciple by whom a guru devotion is to be a practiced. And for this, the source is uh, Ajare Aryadev. Aryadev is a direct disciple of Nagarjun, who have wrote uh, the treatise Chaturshatak. In the Chaturshatak, he gave uh, the uh, requisite qualifications to become a disciple. Surne Loden Tunyeva Nyabonus Jarshi. The first word is Surne. It refers to a, a mindset which is uh, literally translated as uh, no partisan 
non-partisan may not be uh, easy to uh, understand. Here it means that an uh, openness of the mind. Mind is not a biased one, unbiased mind, or having no prejudiced, or having no uh, rigidness on a certain position. A disciple listens to a teacher. Whatever the disciple listens from teacher, if the disciple has uh, his or her own prejudices or existing notions or a kind of uh, uh, kind of rigid idea. If teacher says something, then the disciple immediately think, oh, it is not. In my viewpoint, it is like this. So what the teacher is uh, saying is uh, not acceptable. It reacts immediately due to his or her own pre-existence of notions or pre-existence of uh, prejudices, one's own rigid idea. I know this and this is like this, so that kind of thing. This kind of uh, mental attitude comes from social environment or uh, long perpetuated habits or ideas, certain ideas which are being uh, uh, entertained right from the childhood or a commonly accepted thing which have become a part of our rigid idea and this is difficult to uh, remove. The guru says something against these ideas, then the disciple is not able to uh, ponder upon them, analyze them, because uh, immediately, due to one's own pre entertained idea, the, the things which are explained by teacher may not be uh, able to receive and uh, analyze rationally. So therefore, the unbiased mind, open mind, having no rigid idea, pre-notions, so this is the first qualification. The second is uh, intelligence, Lothan Demba. To become a disciple, certain level of intelligence is necessary. A very unintelligent or dull person may not be able to become a good disciple. Here, intelligence refers to uh, able to analyze the Guru's teaching. The Guru's teaching is rationally verifiable or uh, spiritually verifiable or it is uh, true or it has a falsehood. This kind of uh, rational mind, any guru will not able to lead the disciple 
in a wrong way or give any wrong information or wrong teaching. A power of discrimination, what is the uh, right and what is the wrong, that must have in the mindset of the disciple. So this is uh, um, a sharp mind, an intelligent mind, that is the second requisite. And the third qualification is uh, diligence, a diligent. Most translators use the diligence. That means uh, inquisitiveness, willing to learn willing to understand, willing to go ahead with the uh, learning process. So this is the third requisite. So uh, discipleship needs to be possess these three qualifications, first of all, unbiased or having no prejudice in the matters of teaching, which is receiving from the guru and uh, able to receive it without any immediate uh, um, reaction to listen them, to analyze them, and then to uh, discriminate them. This problem is a major problem for the uh, guru disciple relationship Many disciples listen to the guru with uh, preconcepts in one's own mind. Therefore, at many times, the guru is saying something quite uh, differently, but the disciple understood it in accordance with uh, his or her. pre-notions, pre-ideas, and interpret in that way quite easily. Or at many times, what the teacher is trying to explain is being rejected right away because it is uh, not in accordance with the preconcepts having by the disciple. So therefore, this is a hindrance to a good communication between guru and disciple. So open mind is necessary, intelligent mind is necessary, diligent mind, willing to learn, inquisitiveness, questioning, 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 this is necessary. So these three things as uh, prescribed by the um, Arya Dev in Chaturshtak. Chandrakirti have written a comprehensive commentary on the Chaturshtak. In the commentary, Chandrakirti adds two more qualifications for the discipleship, and uh, that is uh, uh, that is uh, respectful uh, 
to the teaching and teacher. Having respect and faith in the teaching and also in the teacher. And the uh, fifth is uh, be focused. When uh, listening to the Guru, the mind should not be scattered. Fully concentrative, completely focused to what the Guru is uh, teaching, what the Guru is saying. So, in other words, there are three uh, defects of uh, a listener, a vessel in the other treatises. So, free from all this and focused, concentrative, one pointedness, and listening with wholeheartedly, with willingness, and also analyze them appropriately. So, these are the three. Uh, requisite qualifications to become a disciple. So, having said that, a practitioner of graduate path, a practitioner of my meditation, who have a already established to any guru as a disciple, his relationship is already established, then there's no need to examine the guru, whether he or she does have the 10 qualifications or one's own self have the five qualifications because there is already the guru disciple relationship has uh, already established. In that matter, then one must take him for granted that his or her guru possesses all these qualifications. If it appears to you, the guru as liking some qualifications, that is your own misjudgment. So it might appear to you, but in reality, the teacher does have all these qualifications. It will come later on also. And for oneself, if one does not uh, possess the five requisite qualifications, for become a disciple, then one should try to uh, acquire them, cultivate them by practicing the methods to improve as uh, cultivate an unbiased mind, open mind, and also to increase one's own intelligence and at the same time, um, the inquisitiveness and diligent to the uh, subject of teaching or subject of study, and at the same time, to acquire a respectful mindset to the teaching and to the teacher. Then practice how to uh, concentrate, how to focus to the teaching. So therefore, any uh, 
aspirant for a discipleship, before accepting any guru, it is very important to uh, study, to uh, uh, find out whether a person who is uh, considered to be taken as one some guru, the uh, analyzation of the qualifications very important. Otherwise, uh, later on, if you see some shortcomings on the part of guru, then your guru devotion might be easily damaged. So this is very important. And uh, at the same time, to improve your own requisite qualifications to become a good disciple. So this is the first and the second chapter in the matter of uh, Guru devotion or relying on Guru by the disciples in accordance with the uh, Lavrin treatises. We have discussed these two chapters. Now, For this moment, I'll stop here and uh, the next sitting will be the benefits and uh, the demerits of having uh, Guru Devotion and not having Guru Devotion. Wish you all the best. <laughs>